Welcome back to another Metallica guitar lesson. Today you're going to learn how to play the Four Horsemen on guitar. Let's get going. The Four Horsemen has a lot of really fun riffs in it, and a lot of the fun comes from the fact that we're using a swing eighth note feel. Now, The Four Horsemen is the only song on the entire album of Kill 'Em All that uses a swing eighth note feel. So let's just quickly cover that and then we'll dive right in. So swing eighth notes is where the second eighth note of the beat gets a slightly shorter duration than the first. So straight eighths would sound like this. One and two and three and four and, and swing eighths would sound like this. One and two and three and four and okay so notice how that second eighth note is much shorter in duration than the first and it gives it that uneven feel and that's where uh, these riffs are really getting their groove from it's kind of interesting that this intro riff would sound really lame if it was played with a straight eighth note feel right that's pretty lame but as soon as you put the swing eighth note feel in there Right? Oh, all, all of a sudden it comes to life. So remember to swing those eights and let's get going. So we start the riff with four power chords. And we're starting with a C on the third fret of the A string, coming down to a G power chord on the third fret of the bottom string, up to the fifth fret of the A string, a D, and then back down to our starting power chord C. Okay, so we do those four power chords, and then we get into our swing eighth notes. Now, what we want to do is start with our third finger on the seventh fret of the A string, and we put a palm mute on this so that we can ring the bottom string along with that fretted note together. Okay, and then with an upstroke, we're going to snag the fifth fret with our first finger on the A string. Okay, so it's... So we just repeat that over and over, bouncing from our third finger to our first finger. So we hit two strings and then just snag the fifth fret. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and... Now on that second measure, we want to bring our third finger down and hit the seventh fret of the bottom string. And on the album, you can hear those two strings ringing together. So get that minor third interval shape. That's what that would be. So we want the seventh fret on the low string and the fifth fret on the A string. Okay. And still snag that fifth fret for that very final eighth note. And then for our third measure, we just go back to what we did in the first measure. And then we get into this little a little run here. So uh, it's easy to execute. And on the album, though, we have a pinch harmonic in there. So we want to start that measure by going down to the seventh fret of the bottom string, and then up to the fifth fret of the A string, and then do a pull off between seven and five. But now on the album, this is where we have a pinch harmonic. So experiment along that string, wherever you want to get that nice tasty harmonic, and just Get, hit the seventh fret with the harmonic and pull off to the fifth fret. And then come up to the D string and go seven to five, pull off. And back to the A string, pull off seven to five. And you can take your palm mute off of that measure as well. So you'll palm mute. And then just take the palm mute off for that fourth measure where there's that little run. And then put our palm mute back on. Okay, so for those next two measures, we want to go down to that seventh fret again on beat four. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and... And then we just repeat our four power chords. And there's our riff. So it's a bit of an odd structured riff in the fact that it's seven measures long. You know, usually phrases are built in even numbers, four, eight, stuff like that. But this is an, an odd grouping, seven measures. So that whole thing again, nice and slow. Okay. 
Okay, and then we're on to our verse and chorus section. The picking in the verse riff gets a little more complicated because we're starting to pick some triplets. So we want to chug on the low E string and make sure you got a palm mute on that low E string all the time. So we're gonna go one triplet. So go a down, up, down on that low E string and then hit an E power chord, seventh fret of the A string. Okay. And then we repeat that, three triplet, four. One triplet, two, three triplet, four. Okay, now there's a couple of ways that you can pick this. It seems that Hetfield likes to pick it one way and Hammett picks it another way. So you can take your pick between these two, whatever feels more comfortable for you. But Hetfield favors a down, up, down, down. So he goes. Okay, and then Hammett, uh, I've seen him often do a down, up, down, up. Okay, so you can pick whichever feels more comfortable for you. I kind of like the down, up, down, down myself, but there's nothing wrong with the down, up, down, up. Uh, it's, that's fine. I just find that it is a little more aggressive with that down on the power chords. You can really dig in and make it pop out. But okay, let's move on. Once you've got that picking figured out that you want to do. So we go get one triplet, two, three triplet, four for the first measure. And then for the second measure, we go one triplet, two, three, four. So those first two beats are the same. Uh, down, up, down on that low E string. E power chord on the seventh fret. And then just drop it a whole step to a D power chord. Okay, and then. And then the second uh, part of that riff, we repeat that one triplet, two, three triplet, four, one triplet, two, three, four. So that's all the same, except we're just changing that one power chord. We're going all the way down to a C power chord, up to a D power chord. And then the third time, again, it's the exact same, except we're just throwing in a power chord on the 10th fret, a G power chord. And then repeat those four power chords that we had in the intro. C, G, D, C. So really slow, that whole riff. Okay. And so that comes in on the intro, and then that's also played for the verse. And then we get into the chorus. Now on the album, the chorus is played really basic. It's really quite easy. Um, so I'll show that first. And then I'm gonna show you also how they've kind of spiced things up when they play it live, because it's changed a little bit and it's a little bit more interesting now. So on the album though, the chorus just starts on an E power chord up at the seventh fret, and we hold that for almost two measures. One, two, three, four, one, two, three. And then you want to get it up down at the very end of that second measure and four so one two three four one two three and four one down a whole step to d and do the same thing one two three four one two three and four one down another whole step to c do the same thing one two three four one two three and four one just a half step to b and only hold that for one measure one two three four and then we're going to do a whole measure of a pick slide just take your pick and put it on the low strings and slide it so you're just going to go one two three four and then hit your e power chord again to start and then the second half of the chorus starts out the same as the first half one two three four one two three and four one two three four one two and four and this is where it changes we hold the c for only one measure one two three four and then we go so we go down a half a step to b back up to c down to b and then down to the third fret of the low string g okay and then that's our chorus and so 
pretty easy, like I said, on the the album. Not a lot going on. Now live, they obviously keep the same progression, but they've spiced it up a little bit. So live, instead of starting it up here on the seventh fret, they've started it down here. They've substituted that one. A little more balls to it, I guess. So live, I'll, I'll play Hetfield's part because Hammett's, other than the low E, it stays the same. Um, but here's Hetfield's part, what he does live. So as you can see, the first half of the chorus is the same uh, when they play it live, other than that they've substituted in an open E power chord instead of starting it up on the seventh fret. Um, but other than that, the first half of the chorus is the same as it is on the album. Now the difference comes in on the second half. Um, now Hammett plays it the same as it is on the album, but it's Hetfield's part that gives it a little bit more variety and a little more interest. So what Hetfield is doing on that second half is playing octaves. So we're playing notes on the A string and the G string. So we're gonna wanna get that those notes with our first finger and our pinky. And just have your first finger laying over the D string lightly so that it's deadened. And then we're gonna hit these two notes and get two E's so they're octaves apart. So what we wanna do is get the seventh fret on the A string with our first finger and then the ninth fret on the G string with our pinky. Okay, and we're gonna do that one, two, three, four, one, two, three, and four, one, two. So it's the same rhythm uh, that we're duplicating, uh, but we're just sliding this octave up. So we start with this E octave on the seventh fret and ninth fret, and then we slide it up a whole step so that we're on the ninth and eleventh frets. And then we slide it up one more half step to G so that we're on the tenth and the twelfth frets. Okay, so that those coincide with the power chords that Hammett is playing, E, D, and C. Okay, so now these work because when Hammett is playing an E, well obviously E octaves is going to work, that's the root of the chord, right? Now Hammett comes down to a D power chord, and we're going to go up, uh, Hetfield goes up to an F sharp on the ninth fret. So that we're playing the major third, the third of that chord. So we're hearing a D major chord. And then when Hammett falls down to a C power chord, uh, Hetfield comes up to a G, which is the fifth of that chord. So all of these octaves that he's doing is really meshing and they're strong chord tones with the, uh, that underlying harmony. So that's why it works really well. And it's kind of cool because Hammett's falling down while Hetfield's going up. So it really creates that contrary motion. So if you're playing this song live uh, with a band, you'll definitely want to put that in there and it generates a lot more interest. Uh, so uh, that's really it for the chorus. Uh, it's just that one uh, second half of the course that changes when they play it live. And now we can get into our next section. Here we go. Thanks for watching this video. I'm Tim. Welcome to the channel. We're almost all the way through all of the songs on Kill 'Em All. So if you've missed any of the full song tutorials, be sure to check out the link in the description and get caught up. And then we're doing Ride the Lightning. Remember that I'm teaching every Metallica song from every studio album, always with complete guitar taps. So if that sounds awesome to you, remember to hit like and subscribe so that you see a lot more of this content. Now, let's get back to the Four Horsemen guitar lesson. So the bridge section, uh, we have a slightly different picking pattern that we have to discuss because this time the triplets are coming in on beats two and four. So 
what we want to do is do a down, down, up, down, up, down. So that's a one and two triplet three. And then we can repeat that. One and two triplet three and four triplet one and two triplet three and four triplet one. Okay, so that's the picking pattern that they use. It's actually not that hard. Uh, it's nice that we're starting with downs all the time. Okay, so we want to do seven complete measures of that. One and two triplet three and four triplet one. Okay, seven complete measures of that. And then the eighth measure is one and two triplet three, four. Okay, so now on the album, that first time that this slide comes in there on the eighth measure, it's slightly ahead of the beat, but I doubt that that was intentional. And live, they just put it right on the beat. So I wouldn't worry about duplicating that. Um, but yeah, we're just gonna go one and two triplet, three, four. So there's a quick little slide there. We wanna hit the F on the eighth fret and slide down a half a step to E and then repeat that E on beat four. So it's beats three, four. Okay, and then we just basically repeat this concept. One and two triplet three and four triplet one and two triplet three, four. One and two triplet three and four triplet one and two triplet three. Okay, uh, so that second time, you just wanna hit the F, don't slide it down, and then there's our rhythmic figure. And then that repeats four times like that. Um, live, the only thing that they've changed in that riff is that they hit, uh, in the second half of the riff, they hit the F twice. Okay, and then sometimes they also come down here and hit it here just for a little bit more balls again. And like that, so you can substitute this low F on the first fret of the uh, low string if you wanna get uh, a little more depth to the, the part. And then we get into a blue scale run. Okay, so we're going to do seven five on A, down to seven on E, back up to five on A, and then walking right down the E string, seven six five, all the way down to three, back up to five, and then zero three five. So that measure nice and slow. And incidentally, they don't put a palm mute on this either. Uh, so keep the palm mute off and it'll sound just like what they do. And then uh, we have a quick little uh, half measure here to get into our next riff. We go, it's just repeating the first couple of beats that we already did. Seven, five on the A string, down to seven on the E string, back up to the A string, five, and then seven, six, five. Uh, okay, so that whole riff, nice and slow. And then we get into our next cool riff. We do three power chord stabs. So, and that's just walking up chromatically from C on the third fret of the A string, C sharp, D, and then. Okay, so we start with two chugs on E, and then uh, skipping up to our A string, zero and two, and then to D string, three, two, open, two. And then three chugs going, coming into our next measure, three chugs on E. And then we're going to repeat this chromatic little movement, except put an E palm mute in between. So C, E palm mute, C sharp, E palm mute, D. And then that can repeat. Just like that. Now on the album, you play that riff eight times, and then we get into the singing part of the bridge. And it's the exact same riff, except we just do away with the uh, that little riff in the first uh, measure. We just chug straight E's. Okay, so one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. And then we play that for the singing portion. And then we just do this. that whole complete run twice, and we've already talked about that. So it's just that verbatim two times. And then we get into our next little section, which uh, slows down in tempo a little bit, and our first guitar solo goes over that. So here that is.
A couple of interesting points about this section is that, first of all, they don't even play it in their live show anymore. They've cut this section right out. And the other point that I find interesting too is that they stuck with a distorted tone for this section. To me, it seems like it could uh, be a clean part, kind of like something that they did in Phantom Lord, but they stuck with a distorted tone. Uh, so let's go over this. <laughs> We're going to start on the D string, the second fret, and just release the pressure uh, for the first note to get it a little bit shorter and separate the two. And then we're going to use our third finger to go four on the G string, and then two and two on the D and the A strings. And these can all ring together too. And then we're going to use our pinky to go to the fifth fret of the A string. And again, relief, uh, release the pressure on that first note. Okay, and then we come down the G and the D strings barring the second fret. Okay, and then hit that fifth fret again. Down to the third fret of the A string. And then we want the fourth fret of the G string and the second fret of the D string and come down those three notes. Okay, and then down to the second fret of the A string. And then we're just going to do all the second frets uh, on the G, D, and A strings. Okay? Okay, and then that plays all through the first solo too. Uh, and then the last rotation to get out of the solo, we only play the first measure and two beats. So we only play three quarters of it. The very last time that it plays, it uh, does this. And that's where we stop it. And then we come to a B power chord. And then we just go alternate between C, uh, B and C. One and two and three and four and one. And end on a nice B power chord on beat one. And there's that section and then we get back into that stuff. Okay, so there's what's happening underneath the first solo. And I think that that's all of the rhythm parts. Everything else after that is just uh, more of the same old stuff that we've already covered. You've got all the parts, you can just put them together. And now let's go over the lead. The first solo in the song starts off with a bend on the 15th fret of the B string, and we bend that three times to start. The third time we bend release and pull off to 12, come back to the 15th fret, and then bend it again. Okay, so. And then we come up to a string to the high E string and bend that 15th fret as well. And then we go 12, 15, and bend 14. And then just, there's just a random slide effect at the end of that measure. Um, I typically am bending the uh, 14th fret with my second finger. And then I just lay my third finger down and just hit some random strings and slide down. Uh, and then we come down to the seventh position where we have this little melody. Okay, so we start off with the seventh fret on the high string and then 10 and seven on the B string up to the ninth on the high string. 7 on the high string, and then 10, 8, 7 on the B string, 10, 9, 7 on the high string, and then a quick hammer pull from 7 and 10 on the B string. So that first little bit. Okay, and then we're going to hit the 7th fret again, 
Another quick little pull from 10 to seven, and then nine to seven on the G string. Do a hammer from six to seven, back to six, and then seven and seven on the D and the A strings. So that second little bit. All together. Okay, now we get into this uh, double stop slidey thing. So we slide in to the ninth fret with our third finger, and then we're just barring the seventh fret on the high strings. Now the picking pattern is pretty important here to stay in time and really stay in the groove for this measure. So I've supplied the picking pattern for this measure in the tab. So follow along with that, um, but I'll also go over it here. So we slide into that ninth fret with a down, and then we go up, down, down. So it's like this. Okay, and then we go down, up, up. And then another up, down. And then down, up to finish that off. And so really slow. And then bend the 10th fret to get out of that. Okay, so the picking, uh, be sure to follow those and it might take you a little while just to get the hang of that, uh, the little sliding dyad thing that he's doing. But uh, it's a neat little lick. And then, yeah, bend the 10th fret to get out of that. Okay, it's just a basic little pentatonic thing here. So we're gonna bend that 10th fret and then 10 to seven pull off, uh, nine to seven. Uh, on the G string, down to the ninth fret on the D string, back up to the seventh fret on the G string, and then we're gonna bend the ninth fret and release it to the seventh fret. So bend, release, pull off to the seventh fret, down to the ninth fret on the D string, and back up to the seventh fret. And then we wanna double pick that seventh fret again. Then we go up to the B string, seven to eight hammer, back to seven, down to the G string nine, and then seven, eight on the B string, and then a little hammer pull on that seven and eight. Back down to nine on the G string, and then uh, seven, eight, 10, up to seven on the high string, and then a quick little pull from eight to seven, uh, and then down to the 10 on the B string, and then seven and eight on the high string, and then we pick that eighth fret again, and we start sliding up the high string. So we go from eight to 10, 10 to 12, 12 to 14, 12 to 15, with another little random slide at the end. So that whole thing really slow. Okay, on to our next bit. Okay, we're starting with a 17th fret bend, bend that twice on the high string, release it, and we wanna get a 15th fret. Now we have this little sliding lick down the high string. We go 17 to 15 pull off and slide down to 14, and then 15 to 14 pull off, slide down to 12. And then we go 14 to 12 pull off. And now on the B string, we go 15, 14, 12, and now 14 to 12 pull off, down to the G string 14, back up to the B string 12, 14 to 12 pull off on the G string. Repeat that, uh, 14 to 12 pull off on the G string, down to 14 on the D string, back up to G 12, and then 14 to 12 pull off on the D string. And then we finish off our little scale run by going 14 to 12 pull off on the D string, and then pick all these notes, 14 to 12 on the A string, 15 to 12 on the E string, and down to the 10th fret D to finish that off. So that's probably uh, perhaps the trickiest lick here so far. Now we get into our next little lick just by creating a little bit of noise on the A string. There's no real specific note that I could hear. It's just kind of like a... Uh, do that, a little random slide, maybe picking that A string as you get into it. And we wanna get up to um, 
this, uh, we're, we're just in our E minor pentatonic mm -hmm. box here at this point. So we're gonna do this sequence. We go 14, 12, 14, and these are six notes a beat. So 14, 12, 14 on the A string, and then 12 on the D string, 14 on the A string, up to 12 on the D string. And then we're just gonna repeat that sequence up on the next string set. And again. And then it's the same sequence, but it just has to coincide with the actual pentatonic pattern. So for that last one, you have to be up on the 15th fret, not the 14. So it's 15, 12, 15 on the B string, and then 12 E string, down to 15 on the B string, back up to 12 on the E string. So that whole thing, nice and slow. Um, Okay, and then we get into some uh, pretty f uh, fast picking here. We want eight notes of beat. So what we do is we do a quick 15 to 12 uh, pull off and then six uh, more notes. And so it's eight in total. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And we do that for three straight beats. And then we bend uh, that 15th fret twice to finish off the measure and getting into our next measure we bend the 15th again and then we go 15 12 and then we're into this fast uh, pentatonic pull off thing that he likes to do a lot so we start off by going 15 to 12 pull off on the high string four times okay and then we come down to the 15th fret on the b string back up to the high e string and we do two more of these 15 to 12 pull offs Okay, uh, and then we just, that's what we're repeating. We're doing this two pulls down to the B string and back up to the E string. So that's all that we're repeating. So after our group of four, we'll do it five times. And then three more bends on the 15th fret with one unbent. Okay. Um, Okay, and then we're into our last little run, which starts on the G string. We go 12 to 14 hammer, and then 12 to, uh, uh, to 11 slide, and then repeat a 12 to 11 pull off this time. Down to 14 on the D string, back up to 11 on the G string, and then tw 14, 12, 11. Uh, just do all that all as a pull on the D string. And then 12, 11, 9, uh, and then 11, 9, 7. Okay. And then we finish off this first solo by, we're going to use our bar, and we slide up to the 12th fret on the G string and pull off to an open G. Dip the bar, and then hit an open E dive that. So there's two little dips there. There's open G where we dip, and then the open E that we dip again. So that's the first solo. And now on the album, uh, there's a underlying second solo. And these were, these were actually pretty easy to figure out because they were panned hard left and right. So I was thankful for that. I thought, oh man, this might be hard to figure all this out. Uh, if they're kind of mixed together, it might be hard to figure out the notes. But they were panned hard left and right, so it wasn't too bad. Uh, so we'll go over that second guitar part. Even though I remember years ago reading... Uh, uh, interview with Kirk Hammett where he said it was actually just a mistake that they had left one of the channels unmuted when they were listening back so both solos started playing at the same time and it sounded so cool that they decided to keep it so there's nothing really significant about both these solos playing at the same time it's not like they're really thought out and harmonized or anything it's really just simply two solos playing at the same time but there is some cool ideas in the second one as well so we'll go under uh, we'll go over that underlying second solo that comes in and then we'll do the uh, last solo in the song where the tempo is a bit higher so here we go
So the second solo comes in uh, kind of halfway through the, the first solo, that, so that it's not going the whole way through, but where we bend the 17th fret on the high string twice, that's where this uh, second guitar comes in. So again, we're gonna start off the same, bending that 17th fret twice, and then hitting the 15th fret. But this time, we're gonna fall a lot further down that high E string. So we're going 17 to 15 pull off, sliding down to 14, and then 15 to 14 pull off, sliding down to 12. And now this is where we keep going. We go 14 to 12 pull off, sliding down to 10, 12 to 10 pull off, slide down to eight. And then 10 to eight, slide down to seven. Okay, and that's as far as we're gonna go. And then we're gonna go eight, seven pull off, down to the B string 10, back up to seven on the high string, 10 to eight pull off on the B string. And then repeat that 10 to eight pull off on the B string and slide down to the seventh fret. And then eight to seven pull off, come down to the G string nine, back up to the seventh fret on the B string, and then nine, seven, six on the G string, ending on seven on the D string. Okay, and then the, the two solos coincide. We do this uh, sextuplet run that we had in the first uh, solo. And then all this is the same. And the next measure is the same too. But we start to diverge here um, where we're gonna do this. We're gonna sneak our pinky out to the 17th fret starting on this next measure here. So this whole lick would be like this on the second guitar part. Okay, so we do this uh, 15 to 12 pull off four times. Come down to 15 on the B string, up to the 12th fret on the high E string, and then just repeat that. And now here's where it changes. Come up to the 17th fret, pull off to 12, back to 15. And do, redo that again. And then 15 to, 15, 15 to 12 twice and then just walking down our pentatonic pattern. So 15 to 12 on the B string, 14 to 12 on the G string, and 14 to 12 on the D string. So really slow, that little lick is gonna look like this. And now to finish this off, we... Okay, so we start with the ninth fret on the D string, seven and nine on the G string, and now we bend the ninth fret and release, pull off to seven, down to the ninth fret on the D string. Seven, nine, seven. Now up to the B string, at 10, eight. Now we do a quick little hammer from seven to eight, back to seven, and then down to seven on the G string, D string nine, and end on the seventh fret of the D string. Really slow. Okay, and then that second solo uh, also ends with some bar work, but this time we don't slide quite as high. That first solo ended with a the 12th fret pulling off to an open G. This only goes up to the seventh fret. So you just wanna do a slide into the seventh, pull off, and then dip with the bar, and then bring it back up, hit the open E, and dip that. And there's that solo. Now we only have one more solo to go, The uh, where the tempo picks up at the end of the song, and here we go with that.
The solo starts off with a little, it's just a pattern that he moves up to create a little effect. So we're just uh, going 12 on the low string with our first finger and then 13 on the A string with our second finger and 14 on the D string with our third finger. And then we just move that up a string set and keep moving it up. Okay, the last time we want to move that up uh, 12, 13, 14 on the G, B, and E strings. And then finish it off with a 12 on the E string. So the timing changes. We have quarter note triplets. Until here, we just have straight eights. Okay, and then we get into our... There's four whole measures that just repeat the same thing here. And all that we're doing is we're... Uh, we're gonna go 12, 14, uh, or sorry, 15, 14, 12. Uh, but we wanna pull off between the first two notes and then get an upstroke. Okay, so keep your picking. Every beat just has to be down and up. So you're gonna go down, up. And then you're gonna go up to 17, 15 with a pull off and then up on that 12th fret again. And then just repeat those two beats. And you'll do that for four measures, just one triplet, two triplet, three triplet, four triplet, and do that for four whole measures. And then get out of that by bending the 15th fret on the B string. And you're gonna bend that a total of six times. Two, three, so it's one, two, and then three, four, five, six, right? Six bends in total there. Um, so uh, then we get into this, another repeating lick. Very classic blues rock lick that every guitar should know. It's a, you're gonna find this sort of thing in a lot of solos. So what we do is we uh, hit the 12th fret on the high string and then pull off between 15 and 12 on the B string and then bend the 14th fret on the G string so that it matches the B. And we have a unison bend there. And we do that for another four whole measures. And so it's one triplet, two, three triplet, four, one triplet, two, three triplet, four. Uh, and we just do that for four measures. So, and then at the end, it would be three triplet, four, a uh, one triplet. And then we get into this a uh, little triplet figure descending the E minor pentatonic. So to, to get out of this, and then hit the high E string one more time, and then pull off between 15 to 12, on the high string, come down to 15 to 12 on the B string, 14 on the G string, up to B12, and then uh, 15 to 12 B, 14 to 12 G, down to 14 on the D string, up to 12 on G, and then 14 to 12 G, 14 to 12 D, 14 to 12 A, come down to the 10th fret. Okay, and then we're gonna just do a slide, a random slide, to finish that off. Okay, and then we're gonna shift positions. So we're going to slide into the seventh fret of the bottom string with our third finger. And then we're gonna pick the fifth fret on the A string twice, and then slide up to the ninth fret of the A string. Come up to the D string, pick the seventh fret twice, pull off between nine to seven, Back to the A string to hit the 9th fret. Back up to the 7th fret of the D string. And then double pick the 9th fret twice. And then hit the 7th fret on the G string. Okay, and that's kind of a staccato note when he hits it. Then bend the 9th fret on that G string three times. And if you can get some uh, pinch harmonics for those first couple, then it will sound like the album. Okay. And then we jump up to the 19th fret on the high string with your first finger. And we're gonna do some really fast picking here because this is tempo is slightly over 200 beats here. So you're gonna have to be really quick to get this. And we're gonna go four E and uh, And then we're just doing straight 16th notes. And you just wanna hit the 22nd fret for the first 16th note of every other beat. One E and uh, two E and uh, three E and uh, four E and uh. And we're gonna do that for three whole measures. And then we get out of that by bending the 22nd fret on that high string a whole step. And then we bend it again. 
and release. And then we're gonna get into our uh, little repeating pentatonic thing again that he really likes to do. Uh, so we, once we release that 22nd fret, we pick the 19th fret and then 22nd and 19 pull off down to the 22nd on the B string, back up to the high E string 19, and then 22 to 19 pull off twice on the B string, down to the 21st fret on the G string, back up to 19, 22 on the B string, and 19 on the high string, pull off from 22 to 19, 22 to 19 pull off on the B string, down to the 21st fret on the G string, back up to the 19th fret on the B string, pull off, uh, from 22 to 19, down to the G string 21, 19 to 22 on the B string, back up to the high E string, 19, 22 to 19, 22 to 19 on the B string, 21st fret on the G string, back up to the B string 19, 22 to 19 pull off, 21 to 19 pull off on the G string, 21 on the D string, 19 on the G string. Pull, doing three bends on the 21st fret of the G string. Right, so that's a little confusing. Um, it's just a long repeated run. I'll play it really slow a couple of times here for you and it'll help you get through it. So. And one more time. Okay, and now to finish off this solo, we're uh, another little repeating thing here, and this one's a lot easier to play. Um, we're gonna slide into the 14th fret on the B string, and then up to the 12th fret of the high E string, and then we're going to go 15 to 12 pull off on the high string, 14 to 12 pull off, and then 14 to 12, 14 on the B string, back up to 12 on the E string, and this just repeats. Okay. You're just going to play that four times. That that 15 pull off and 14 pull off happens four times. And then we slide into this uh, repeating triad thing. It's another. It's more triplets. Um, we slide in to the 17th fret on the B string with our second finger, and then up to the 15th fret of the E string, and then we pull off from 19 to 15, and then come back down to the 17th fret on the B string. And then there, then we're into our repeating triplet pattern. Okay, so that is just gonna be a 19 to 15 pull off with 17 on the B string. But to get into that, you have to ram a couple of notes into that first beat, just to, to get into that triplet pattern. There's a couple of notes there on the album. So it's and one E and a two triplet, three triplet, four triplet, one triplet, two triplet, three triplet, four triplet. So notice how in those first couple of beats, there's just an extra couple of notes in there until we can get into time with the repeating triplet thing. Uh, and then we come down to uh, triplets on the 17th and 14th frets of the high string. So do a pull off and then upstroke on the open E. And there's our triplet, one triplet, two triplet. And come all the way up to the 22nd and 19th frets and repeat that. One triplet, two triplet, three triplet. So you're going to be doing a pull off between 22 and 19 and then open E string. One triplet, two triplet, three triplet. And then on B4 it changes. We just do our 22 to 19 pull off, but back up to 22. And then three bends. So that last beat or that last measure, one triplet, two triplet, three triplet, four triplet, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And there's the solo. Now you know how to play the Four Horsemen 100% accurately. Be sure to learn all of the songs off of Kill Em All by clicking the link in the description or, hey, you know what? I'm going to put it right here for you. There's the Metallica tutorial playlist so you can become a master at Kill Em All and you're ready for Ride the Lightning. I also put out a lot of other stuff than just Metallica. There's some cool 80s metal, some classic rock, a whole bunch of modern stuff. So check out some of that stuff before you go. And don't forget to hit like and subscribe to support the channel so I can keep doing this for you guys. And I'll see you next time.